Okay, in this video, I'd like to just introduce and lead in to our questions on pulleys by describing. I want you to understand the, the tension vectors in pulley and rope systems. Now, this very much ties in with my video on the massless rope and my video on Newton's third law. So, what I suggest is that you look at those, I think they're very important, and that if you don't understand these videos or these concepts, then you really are. Um, practicing heresy I suppose really because you'll be doing things which might work but in actual fact are incorrect and they don't work for the general case so look just to just to kind of show you what we're talking about here if I have a rope stretched between two blocks and I'm going to call this block number two and this here block number one all right block number one now if you look at the forces in the the i hat unit vector direction so I'll say this is i hat and this is j hat We've seen in the past that if they're on, on the ground, then the j-hat vectors just cancel out. So let's just look at the i-hat vectors. So we have the force, uh, we have two forces. We have one here, and one here, and one here, and one here. We're talking about Newton's third law pairs. So I'm just going to draw them like this, and like this. Right? So these are those vectors. So we have, we have this one, and we have this one. All right, so let's see what they are. This is the force of the rope on number one. This is the force of the rope on number two. This is the force of one on the rope, and this is the force of two on the rope. All right, so let's just look at what's happening in the rope. So if I draw the rope again, the two forces acting on the rope are number one on the rope going this way. This is F1R. And we have the force 2 on the rope going this way, F, or the block 2 on the rope going that way. So let's apply Newton's second law that the sum of the forces uh, on, on, on the rope are equal to the mass of the rope times the acceleration of the rope. Let's just apply Newton's third law. So we get, to mind the signs, I know they're going in opposite directions, but um, let's just look at magnitudes, right? So we have, we have F1R, the force of the block 1 on the rope, plus the force of the, the second block on the rope is equal to the mass of the rope times its acceleration. So what that means is that the, the rope actually might be accelerating. However, what happens if the mass of the rope is zero? It means that the magnitude of the force of the block one on the rope is equal to the magnitude of the force of the block number two on the rope. And that might, you might say, well, that's, that's pretty straightforward. And I would suggest, absolutely, that's very straightforward, okay? So I'm just going to note this uh, 1R is equal to 2R. Just bear with me now and go back up here. So what we've shown is that for a massless rope, the magnitude of F1R, the force of the block 1 on, on the rope, is equal to the magnitude of the second block on the rope. However, let's look at our Newton's third law pairs. We saw that F1R is equal to FR1 and F2R is equal to FR2. So the force of the block number 2 on the rope is equal to the force of the rope on the block and similarly over here. So let's just apply these to this. So let's just write down the Newton's third law pairs again. So I'll ignore him, right? He's separate. So third law pair. So we have the following. We have that FR1 is equal to negative F 1R and FR2 is equal to negative F2R. Alright, these are all vectors. Okay, that's we knew that straight away. But we found that F1R is equal to F2R now. Okay, so uh, what can we put in here? That means that look, if we put in, so if that means FR1 is still equal to negative F. 1R, but we know F1R is equal to magnitude to F2R. Alright, so what we found basically is that the force of the rope on block 1 is the same as the force of block 2 on the rope. Okay, and we found the same over here. We found, let's do the exact same over here. So we have FR2 is equal to minus F. 2R is equal to F1R because we have it over here. Now I know the directions are odd, right? So basically what we found 
is that the two forces acting on the block F1, the force of the rope on the block, this one F or 2, the force of the rope on the block number 2 is equal to the force of the rope on block number 1. Because if you look, these are all the same. Every one of them are the same. Okay, so the force by the rope on both blocks is equal. If and only if the mass of the rope is equal to zero. Everything is equal provided the mass of the rope is equal to zero. Right? Now just in case you're getting a bit confused, then that's okay. That's just perfectly acceptable and normal. Let's just rewrite what we had here. This was F1R, the force of the block 1 on the rope. And this was F2R, like that. What we've just found is where the block is massless, or excuse me, the rope is massless, F or 1 is equal in magnitude to F or 2. Alright? F or 2. So, what if we look at the forces on the block? If we just block, draw block 1 and drop, uh, draw block 2, the only force acted up on the block by number 1, or by the rope, excuse me, is this one force of the the rope on block 1 and this one the force of the rope on block 2 like that and look both the, the rope is, is still just one rope like this so you end up if you wanted to draw very quickly if you wanted to draw all the forces acting on between two blocks and one single rope you draw number one you draw number two you draw the rope between them and you draw two forces like this and these both are equal in magnitude so F the force of the rope on block 2 is equal to the force of the rope on block 1 and they're obviously going in opposite directions but the magnitude is the same and of course they're not a Newton third law pair don't get confused they're only equal in magnitude and direction because the mass of the rope is equal to zero alright so let's just I'll show you how to we'll say we'll give you one final example showing an actual pulley system if I draw this pulley system here so I draw a ceiling I draw pulley like so and I draw two blocks like so straight away we can draw in the following forces the tension of the block on or excuse me, of the rope on block one, so I'm just going to call it T, and the tension of the rope on block two, which they call it T. And these are equal, but they're only equal because the rope is massless, and they're not a Newton's third law pair. All right, they're not a Newton's third law pair. And the last thing we can draw is, of course, the weight of block one and the weight of block two. All right. And they're the only forces acting on the blocks. But like I said, it's vital that you understand it's only because the block is or the rope is massless. And the last thing we will have is an acceleration. Now the acceleration can be either upwards or downwards. It doesn't really matter. So what you're going to have is as follows. When you apply Newton's third law, if it's going upwards for block two, you're going to have if you apply Newton's third law, just or second law, excuse me, the sum of the forces. A block number 2 is equal to the mass of 2 times its acceleration. So therefore you're going to get T, which is T is a, it's plus T J hat minus W2 J hat is equal to um, the mass of number 2 times acceleration. And similarly you're going to get for the, this block, this one, if it's going up for block 2, it's going down for block 1. So it's going to be W1 J hat minus T J hat or sorry minus W1 plus T J hat is equal to the mass of number 1 times the acceleration okay because note, note the thing excuse me in my unit vectors which never change and there are the two formula and those two you can you can make those equal the acceleration for both is equal the tensions are equal and the only things that are different are the the weights or the yeah the weights the sum of the force of the mass um, the mass and the gravity vector put together. So like, that's all I've got to say about that. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. Uh, if you understand this, then you're really, really doing well. And I mean that. That uh, and like it means that you strongly understand the concepts being being done here. Lots of people don't understand them. They still do well in the exam, 
but they may struggle when it goes to college or they may struggle with really tough questions because they don't actually understand the information. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.